Camden has been famous for many things over the years, as a vibrant market, as a place for up-and-coming musicians, as a centre for the arts. But I'm not cool enough for those things, so let's talk about an abandoned station. Camden, if you're not familiar, is a suburb just north of central London, a long walk or a short bus ride from the city and the West End. In 1820, the Regent's Canal opened. This was a major goods route that curved around central London, from Limehouse to Little Venice. In 1838, the London and Birmingham Railway opened, running from London to... Hold on, I've got this, don't tell me... Birmingham. At Camden, the railway crossed the canal. Therefore, this was seen as a pretty good place to build a transport interchange. Pickford's, a road transport company founded in the 17th century and still in business today, decided to build a goods depot here in 1841. Shortly after, in 1846, the London and North Western Railway bought it from them. The London and Birmingham Railway had become part of the London and North Western Railway that very year, and they figured they could use all that warehouse space. In 1851, another railway showed up, the East and West India Docks and Birmingham Junction Railway, which was a very long name, and they wound up renaming it the North London Railway. Then the London and North Western Railway took that over, but that's another story. Point is, they also used the depot. The depot was a large and busy place, and you can still see a lot of the signs of its forming use today. Most obviously, there are all these rails set into the cobbles. This round thing here is also quite interesting. It marks the site of a wagon turntable. These were common in railway goods facilities. As a way of making best use of limited space, if you want to see a surviving example, there's one at Coldrops Yard in King's Cross. Wagon turntables were used in conjunction with capstans, rotating drums that enabled horses or locomotives to haul wagons around corners. Capstans were often hydraulically power-assisted, meaning that it was possible for a man to haul a wagon. They were an essential aspect of any goods depot in the steam era, as not only did they also make efficient use of space, but they meant that locomotives didn't have to actually enter the buildings. You don't want your lovely goods all covered in soot or catching fire due to rogue sparks. Well, unless you're planning insurance fraud, but that's a whole other ballgame. Also essential to the goods depot was a vast fleet of horses and carts, and the facilities to look after them. What is now the stables market used to be just stables, complete with smithy, feed stores, and a horse hospital, or hospital. Literally hundreds of horses could be stabled here, with up to 800 by the end of the 19th century. And that wasn't even all of them. The London and North Western and North London Railways had additional stables at Euston and Broad Street, respectively. And local businesses would often have a stable of their own. The depot affected the industries that grew up here. Camden became a popular centre for the manufacture of pianos. In large part because lugging a piano through the streets is a real drag, so it's convenient to have a railhead nearby. Wines and spirits were also a major business in the area. The Roundhouse, built as a locomotive shed and now a performance venue, spent some 90 years as a bonded warehouse for spirits after steam engines outgrew it. Gilby's, another spirit merchant, had extensive stores in the depot complex. 1907 saw the only time that Bakerloo line trains ran through Camden, where the line's first trains were delivered from America and offloaded here being taken by horse and cart to their depot. Incredibly, horses were still in use here until 1967, whereupon the stables were closed down. There was an idea to drive a motorway through the site, which happily came to nothing, and in 1974 a market started here. Over the decades it became a major tourist attraction, although nothing like as good as it was, in my opinion. Why, when I was a teenager, you could come here with ten pounds in your pocket. The goods depot finally closed in 1980, and the area was partially redeveloped. The large transfer shed is now the headquarters of a media company, as I found out when their security guards wanted to know why I was photographing it. I mean, they were very polite about it, even if they didn't want to know about capstan shunting. Normally, when we think of abandoned stations, or at least when I do, we envision some neglected little building in the back streets. This must be about the largest abandoned station in London. If you know differently, though, do let me know in the comments section.
And don't forget to hit the like button if you did indeed like this video, and consider subscribing for more content along these lines. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio!